Well, I've been talking on boldness. I started last week and I'm continuing today. And so I'm doing part two of take bold steps. Take bold steps. Every significant endeavor that we undertake in life requires boldness. Everything important that we seek to do in life requires boldness. It takes boldness to rise from the bed to face a new day every day. Without boldness, you will continue sleeping on without facing the day, especially when there are troubles facing you in the day. It takes boldness to wake up. It takes boldness to sit around people and feel comfortable when you know that those people are way ahead of you, they are smarter than you, they are more beautiful than you, or more handsome than you, or better educated than you. It takes boldness to be in company of people who you feel are ahead of you. It takes boldness to marry. It takes boldness to see somebody and decide, of all the people in the world, this is the one I'm going to settle with. For the men, it takes boldness to propose. For the women, it takes boldness to accept a proposal. Because marriage is a very, very unknown enterprise. And it takes boldness to marry. And in this day and age, it also takes a lot of money. And so a lot of young people are running away from marriage. May God give you the boldness to marry. It takes boldness to believe God for big things. When God wants you to do big things, it's going to take boldness for you to do it. It takes boldness to step out of an abusive relationship. When somebody keeps abusing you, belittling you, it could be uh, a boss or it could be somebody who is just making your life miserable, but you feel trapped. It takes boldness to step out from abuse. Boldness is required for every important endeavor. It takes boldness to demand for fairness and to be treated well. It takes boldness to wear the clothes you love and to wear the hairstyle you love and to put on the lipstick you like and to wear the shoes you like because some of you have fashion that you wish you could dress in, but you are scared of what people will think. If I change my hairstyle, if I change my makeup, if I change my lipstick, it takes boldness to try new things in your life. So many of us are stuck in life because we are afraid. We are afraid what will people think? Will we be accepted? What if tomorrow I paint my hair pink? What will people say? What if I paint my hair blue? What if I change my clothes? What if I, I do something differently? And so what happens is many of us are stuck in limited lives. We are stuck doing things we hate, but not having the boldness to do the things we truly want to do. And I pray that God will give us boldness to step out of limitation and into the life that he truly wants us to live. And that's what taking bold steps is all about. God wants us to be bold. So I'm doing part two. Last week, we looked at boldness in terms of defiance, and when we talked about the children of Israel coming out of, bold, of Egypt with boldness, and, and the word for bold meant arm or hand, literally a clenched fist. Today we're going to look at another sense of boldness. It's not the same root word in, uh, in, in Hebrew, but it's also spoken about as boldness in English. And the verse we will build on is in Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 1. It takes boldness to bring a Bible to church. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 1. 
The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. That word bold is from a Hebrew word, batak, and it is translated as bold in our English Bible. But it is not the same word that is translated as bold from the verse we read last week. So here the Bible is introducing a new concept of boldness to us. And this word has something to do with what happens inside of us instead of what happens outside of us. And the root word for batak or boldness means to trust, to trust. The bold person has a deep sense of trust in God. They have a sense of anchor in their life. Their life is not tossed about. Their life is anchored in God. That is the first meaning of bold, to trust. Secondly, it means to be secure, to be secure. The person who is bold has a sense of personal safety in the Lord and an inner sense of security. They are not insecure. They feel safe. And no wonder the Bible describes those people as bold as a lion. The reason why it chooses the lion as the metaphor for boldness is because in the jungle or in the savannah or wherever lions are, they are quite high on the food chain and uh, they don't have predators. Lions do not have other animals that attack them. Once in a while, when a lion is sick and weak, a hyena may try to attack it. Once in a while, when a lion wants to face a, a, an elephant, a, an elephant may uh, defend itself and attack a lion. But naturally, no animal sees the lion as an animal to be attacked. So, the lion has no sense of attack. It has no sense of fear because it has no natural predator. And the Bible says the righteous person has that sense of security. They are so secure that they have no sense of attack. That somebody is coming against them. You know, many of us have a sense of attack. Even those of us who are Christians... We're constantly on the lookout for attackers. Constantly on the lookout for spiritual attack, wicked spirits, demonic powers, entities in the realm of the spirit, and, and, and witches and wizards and, and, and all kinds of things. And, and so when you have this sense that you have predators or, or things that can attack you, you walk always looking around always furtive, always looking around. But a lion doesn't do that. An antelope is always looking around because it has enemies. A gazelle is always looking around because it has enemies. But the lion doesn't look around because it is secure. And the Bible says the righteous are as bold in the same way as the lion is bold. Why? Because they have a sense of security. And thirdly, that word bold, batak, also means to have confidence, to be confident. You see it in the way the lion approaches life, with confidence. It walks with confidence. It attacks with confidence. It goes for its food with confidence. Because it has a sense that when it sets out to do something, it can achieve it. And the Bible says the righteous are like that. The wicked pursues when no one, uh, the wicked runs when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold 
as a liar. Now, when you look at that verse, it talks about the righteous and the wicked. It's not just talking about actions, but it's talking about relationship. The wicked there is not wicked because they do bad things, although doing bad things can be part of wickedness. But the wicked there is wicked because they have no relationship with God. And the righteous is righteous not because they do good things. The righteous is righteous primarily because they have a relationship with God. So therefore, uh, this verse is not even talking about your actions. It's talking about your relationship with God. That is where our boldness or lack of boldness comes from. The kind of relationship with, you have with God will determine how bold you are. The righteous are bold as a lion. So let me first try and, and say what boldness is not about. Of course, boldness is not wickedness. But many times, you know, when we say somebody is bold, we, we have an image of a bold person. And many times the image of a bold person is not a good image. Many times when we say somebody is bold, it means that they are bullies. They trample on other people. They bully other people. But boldness is not bullying and threatening others. Boldness is not being rough and inconsiderate. Boldness is not bullying people, threatening fire and brimstone. Boldness is not you know, that boss or that person in the office who gets up and screams at everybody and everybody's running helter-skelter. That's not the boldness we are talking about here. Boldness is not making people uncomfortable, taking advantage of people, destroying people's lives, bullying people, throwing tantrums. That's not bold, uh, uh, boldness. So when we say the righteous are as bold as a lion, don't go to your office and scream, hey, everybody! I'm here. Run for your life. That's a bully. That's not bold. So boldness is not that. Secondly, boldness is not boasting and being loud mouth. Talking big. Talking above everybody. Making yourself obnoxious. That's not boldness. Boldness is not boasting. It's not about trying to impress people. It's not pretense. It's not putting on a show. It's not about bragging. Because after you've talked the talk, you must walk the walk. Have you ever met people who talk so big and then the demonstration is very disappointing. I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. Then you ask them to do it, and they can't do it, they can't do it, they can't do it. Boldness is not bragging. And thirdly, boldness is not acting without thought or wisdom. When we say you are bold, it doesn't mean you are foolish. It doesn't mean you're just taking risks without thinking. Boldness is not just stepping out to do something because I have to do something. And sometimes making very unwise choices in the process. Boldness requires a sense of direction and perspective. It requires taking risks, but educated risks, calculated risks not jumping into things you haven't thought through. Think, plan, act. That's boldness. So if you're a man who is looking for a wife, boldness is not just seeing a lady in the streets and saying, I'll marry you. People say, he's bold, oh, he's bold. He just saw the lady and said, I'll marry you. That is not boldness. That is very close to foolishness. <laughs> it's not foolishness fully, but close to it is heading towards that. Because before you tell a woman that you want to marry her, considering that you're going to live the rest of your life 
with this person, that you're going to produce children with this person, that you're going to build a family budget with this person, they're going to make investments with the advice, they're going to raise children with character based on the home that all of you will build. You have to be thinking. You can't just meet somebody in the street and say, I love you the way you are, the, I see the way you walk, I love you, I want to marry you. That's not boldness, my friend. Young man, you are heading in the other direction. Foolishness is getting close to you. And of course, the ladies, the same way. Boldness doesn't mean hey, just seeing men and running after them. That's not boldness. That is also close to the other direction. It's foolishness. Boldness doesn't mean that just act without thinking. Boldness requires that we take strong actions, but they come from thinking and planning and acting. It's a risk, but it's educated, it's calculated, it's thought through. The pros and cons have been weighed, and now we take a bold step to make it happen. So, when I talk about boldness, these are not what I, I, we are talking about. Bullying and threatening others, boasting, being loud mouthed, acting without thought or wisdom. That's not the boldness we are talking about. So, what boldness are we talking about? If we talk about the righteous are as bold as a lion, what kind of boldness is that? First, it is our boldness that is ground, grounded in righteousness. It's a boldness that is grounded in righteousness. That's where our boldness is. It is grounded in righteousness. And this is the source of the Christian's boldness. We are bold because of what Christ has done for us. We are bold because of who God is to us. I said at the beginning, righteous and wicked is not just about actions, it's about relationship with God. The wicked is the one who has no relationship with God. The righteous is the one who has a relationship with God. Therefore, my righteousness is based on my relationship with God. The deeper my relationship with God, the deeper my boldness. The less my relationship with God, the less my boldness. If I'm far away from the Lord, I will feel threatened by every situation. If I'm close to the Lord, I am confident even in the valley of the shadow of death. The believer's righteousness is the source of their boldness. So when it says the righteous are as bold as a lion, don't just be a lion first, but have a relationship with God, and on the back of that relationship, you are now going to enter life and uh, you would not be afraid of every, any predator that wants to take you out. So what does all of that mean? First, it means having a right relationship with God. Begins with our salvation, making Jesus the Lord of our lives. Asking the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide us. Walking in the light of God's word. That's where our righteousness starts from. Having a relationship with God through salvation. Through Jesus Christ. By coming on earth, Jesus bridged the gap between us and God. By dying on the cross, Jesus removed the obstacle of sin that existed between us and our heavenly father. By resurrecting from the dead, Jesus demonstrated that we have victory over every evil power. By his ascension, Jesus guarantees the relationship we have with our heavenly father. That is the first basis of our boldness, our relationship with God. Secondly, it is seeing ourselves as God sees us. God sees us in Christ. And we should also see ourselves in Christ. And because he is beloved, we are also beloved. Because Christ is accepted, we are also accepted. As he is, so are we. He is above, so we are also above. He overcame, so we also overcome. He is a conqueror, so we are also conquerors. When you see yourself the way God sees you, it changes your perspective. 
The story is told of Gideon, who thinks he's a feeble person. He's threshing wheat in the vine press. He's hiding from the Midianites. To all intents and purposes, if you saw Gideon, you would say, what a weak guy. He's afraid. He's an afraid man. But how does God see Gideon? God, the angel of the Lord, comes to Gideon, and he says to Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. What? Mighty man of valor. But he's hiding. God says, yeah, you think you are weak, but I see you as strong. You think you are down, I see you as above. You think that you are, you are a prey, I see you as undevourable. That's how God sees you. And that's the source of our boldness because God sees me as a conqueror, I see myself as a conqueror. And I believe no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Not because I'm special or I'm a very unique human being above all human beings, but because Christ has made me who I am. I see myself in him. That is the source of my boldness. Boldness is not bravado. It's not going beating your chest and say, hey, me, me, I don't fear, I don't fear anything. I don't fear anything. On what basis? Yeah, I'm, I don't fear. Me, I don't fear. I don't fear. On what's the basis of your I don't fear? If you say, well, because my father was a brave man. That's a weak basis. Because me, me and my, my, my ancestors were hunters. That's a weak basis. Because in our family, we don't fear anybody. That's weak. Because your family... It's not the basis of your boldness. But if you go about and say, I don't fear anything. I'm strong. And they ask you, why? You say, because Christ is in me. And I am in him. Because he overcame, I overcome. Because he conquers, I conquer too. Because he can do all things, I can do all things. All things are possible to God. All things are possible to him who believes. My possibility is based on God's possibility. And when Christ is the source of your boldness, your family may change, your location may change, your tribe may change, your circumstance may change, but your boldness will never change. Because nobody can annul the basis of your boldness. It's Jesus Christ, who he is, and what he has made you. If the sun sets you free, you are freely free. You are freely free, free indeed. In other words, you are free double. You are double free free. That's what free indeed means, free free. You are free free. That's our boldness. And that's why you can do the things that God says you can do. The bold person is a person who is able to do the things that God wants them to do. And the things that God wants you to do are not always easy to do. God is going to demand things from you that you think you can't do. But when God says you can do it, you can do it. Amen? Amen? If God says you can do it, you can do it. So if God says build it, you can build it. If God says buy it, you can buy it. If God says marry, you can marry. Economy or no economy. When God says, do it, you can do it. 
So one of the sources of your boldness is to find out what is God impressing on my heart to do? Is he telling me to start a new project? Is he telling me to build a house? Is he telling me to buy a land? Is he telling me to start something? Is he telling me to believe for that? Whatever he says you should do, you can do it. Because with every command of God, there comes an equal measure of grace to enable you to do it. Grace is God's addition and compensation for your human weaknesses. So that where you are weak, you become strong. If he says you can do it, you can do it. Grace is available. Boldness is doing what God says you can do. Many of us are doing the things that Ghana says we can do. <laughs> and Ghana will tell you so many things cannot be done. If you're a young man, you are in love, you see the love of your life, a young lady, you just out of university, you work for three, four years, but it's as if you are still in secondary school, salary-wise. Salary is not good. The lady, too, her salary is not good. You are in love. You want to marry. But Ghana tells you economy is bad. And if you are not careful, you reduce the relationship to a guilty relationship where you are there, and today you are having sex here, Today you are fornicating there and you feel guilty and you feel bad. You are with a girl and then she gets pregnant. And you say, we haven't married her. Go and remove the pregnancy. And you are complicating your whole life, your future children. You are throwing them away. But you love the lady. You love the lady. Marry! He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. You already have favor. Marry! But pastor, we are broke. Who told you broke is an enemy of marriage? One shall put away a thousand. Two shall put away ten thousand. Your marriage makes you stronger, better, bolder, richer, more equipped, wiser, smarter. So you don't have the money. But the marriage is what will give you the money. So that when you are making one foolish decision, you can tell on the bed and say, honey, this is what I want to do. What do you think? Say, ah, honey, this one is foolish, oh. Then you, so you're becoming wiser. It takes boldness to say, God has given me the love of my life. I'm not going to mistreat her. I'm not going to start this relationship on guilt, on shame. I want to start this relationship in dignity, in honor. When I was married, my wife would tell you, I didn't have anything. Didn't have a bed, didn't have chair, didn't have cutlery, didn't have plate. You tell him. We married, the first furniture for our room was benches discarded benches from the church. Those days we didn't use to sit on nice chairs. Benches. And I improved them by painting them white. <laughs> I have always been a man of improvement, of excellence. I say it's a bench, but let's apply excellence here. Paint it white. And that's what we had in our sitting room, if you call that a sitting room. Benches. But we were together. We prayed together. 
We believe together. Then we move from benches. If you are waiting to be rich before you marry, your head is not working. All of you young men and ladies, your head is not working. You don't want to marry, but you are sleeping together. You don't want to marry, but you are sleeping together. What is reserved for marriage? You want it, but you don't want the process. Your head, your head is hurting you. It's paining you. Be bold. Marry. Set the date. If you are afraid of veil, don't veil. If you are afraid of gown, don't gown. If you are afraid of, of wedding cake, don't cake. Just come to the church office. This is the woman I want, this is the man I want. Do you, do you, I do, I do. Go. That's how it's done. Then from there you start together in agreement, praying together, thinking together, planning together, acting together. And you would see that the battles you are fighting now become easier. One gets down, the other pulls him back. The one is down, the other pulls him back. And step by step, step by step, step by step, step by step. That's how your parents got to where they are. For all the young men and women, this message is for you. Be bold. Parents, tell your sons, be bold. Tell your daughters, be bold. You have stayed here for so long. Be bold and move out. <laughs> be bold. It's, life is never going to be easy at any point. But when you come into agreement and you are purposeful, you boldly do things. And you will be able to turn your life around, acquire property 30 years from now, 40 years from now. You will see how far God has brought you. But this dragging the feet, dragging the feet, drag, you want to wait till you are 55. When you are now going to pension, and now you have a nice two-bedroom house, that's when you want to marry. By the time you are 70, your children are going to write wasi. <laughs> we'll be praying for them on Sunday morning. Let's pray for all those who are going to write wasi. <laughs> you are 70, your children are writing wasi. Somebody say, I'll be bold. Say, I'll be bold. Based on the righteousness of God. And if God says I can do it, I can do it. Let's pray. Father, you are our backbone. You are our source. You are the one we lean on. When the waves are strong, we rest in you. When life is difficult, we rest in you. You have never given an assignment that you didn't provide for. And whatever you tell us to do, you have already made provision for it in our future. So based on who you are, we take life with boldness. We seize the opportunities. We seize the moment. And I pray, Father, for your children that no one will be held back because of lack, because of what they don't have. But their eyes will be turned on your immeasurable provision, your boundless grace, your gifts without limitation, that we can boldly step out 
and do great things for you in our lives, in our families, as teens, wherever we are. Help us, Lord, to do both things for you. In Jesus' name, amen.